Welcome to the trap house, y'all. Come on in. <laughs> it's your favorite cousins. Favorite cousin. Big L. Not the little one. <laughs> Welcome back to the house. We're going to sip on this Aries Solar New Moon Eclipse tea for as long as we can. I have my physical tea here. Um, I have a video on here on my YouTube page where I show you guys my unboxing of my Barbie stuff. I've been an avid Barbie collector collector for years. When the movie came out, it actually kind of pissed me off because that meant that everybody else was going to have access to like a hidden club and environment that we Barbie people are. So y'all welcome. Y'all welcome that y'all was able to come into our world, the cool world. But what I will say is since the movie came out, we got a whole lot more memorabilia, like really cool shit. Uh, they were already releasing some retro Barbies a couple of years ago. And so since the movie, they've released more. Y'all got these two little locks that are trying to grow in on my bottom layer. I don't know. I just let things happen now. That's the one thing about the lock journey. <laughs> and first of all, it's not for everybody. Secondly, if you're not prepared to look different every time you look in the mirror for those first couple of years with your locks, then you're not ready for the journey. Um, if you're not ready, if you feel like the beginning stage of the lock journey is the ugly phase, you're not ready. Um, if even when you've gotten to the part where you are locked and everything is the way that it should be, so to say, you're not prepared for there to be some little ones that want to start doing their own thing, then you're not ready. My lock journey is a lot like my spiritual journey. It wasn't always the prettiest. It wasn't always the most, uh, presentable. Uh, it was... A lot of the time unruly it was not always controllable it was not always understandable but it is uniquely mine this is my hair uniquely my hair uniquely my journey my my um, experience uh, the same is true with the pace of how your locks may grow so you can start your locks at the same time as someone else starts theirs and theirs can grow either considerably slower or faster than yours but it's important that's my baby that's important. It's important that you don't get side sidetracked by that or compare your journey, your life journey, which is ultimately your physical journey to that of someone else's experience. I'm also doing something new with these bangs, y'all. So they grow pretty rapidly. I'm grateful. But now they're down here again where I can't see. And I already told myself because the last time I cut my bangs, y'all, I had them the fuck up here and it was retrograde. It was back in like August. It was retrograde when I cut my shit. So I'm not going to cut it again. <laughs> I'm just going to let it grow. But I was like, it's too... It's too long. I'm trying to do something different with how I look on the video right now. That's also very much so that Aries eclipse. Like, who are you going to be in the future? Not who you used to be. Who are you going to be in the future? Your future self is rooting for you. Your future self is waiting for the baton. Your future self is waiting for the baton. Speaking of the baton, let me grab my sound bowl baton and let's clear some energy. <sighs> Take a couple of deep breaths. Your gratitude to the Most High God and Goddess for allowing you to see another day and week. We are here on this Venus Day, this Friday. Um, give gratitude for the opportunity to embrace another eclipse and grow through the eclipse and let go of things through the eclipse. Um, but your higher self is in the near distance waiting for you to pass them the baton. Um, and your higher self and your future self has all of these dreams and things that you've been waiting for and working on and working towards so the Aries Eclipse is here to burn that shit up burn those bridges that connect you to your old life to your own belief system to your old modalities in uh, in efforts for you to welcome your highest self your newest self with open arms we're gonna do things a little differently today I'm gonna pull some cards first and we're gonna see how if at all if they correlate with the actual um, notes that I took for the Aries new moon total solar eclipse if you're on my patreon we talked about the woo woo uh, meaning of this eclipse like you know <clears throat> the spiritual uh, modalities of it I learned a long time ago and I don't talk about my, my personal life too publicly because of these exact occurrences but you gotta be careful what you say in public. You gotta be careful what you say on these platforms because you run the risk of them people showing up at your door, showing up at your, in your face, you know. <laughs> if you if you don't. So on Patreon, we talked a lot about um what the eclipse is spiritually, energetically, what you should do. 
Um, on the surface, I'll just say this is not a time for you to be trying to manifest. This is not a time for you to do rituals. This is not a time for you to set intentions. If anything, you want to give great reverence to the total solar eclipse and allow it to, again, burn the bridges that it's trying to for you to get over to the other side. It's my collective. If you want some internal uh, insights or some deeper insights, I, I encourage you to subscribe to my page. All right. Surrender procrastination is our first surrender message for this Aries solar new moon eclipse. Now is the time to jump on a goal instead of putting it off. Taking action will attract success. And I love how it's this path towards enlightenment, towards higher learning, towards higher understanding. Um, but it's also a path into the unknown because we can only see so far. We can only see to where the light touches. We can only see where that last tree stump is. We can't see beyond that. But that may be leading to the procrastination, but that's the exact same reason why we just have to go. You just have to get up and go. When I went to Puerto Rico a couple of years ago, we um, hang, is it hang glide or when you go across the line, zip lining. I was afraid. I didn't want to do it. I'm not afraid of heights. I'm afraid of jumping off shit though. So um, I didn't, I was not, I didn't want to do it. And I would be the last one to go. I was trying to make myself the last one to go. And the group that I was with, uh, I was like, go Lauren, just go, just go. And I remember at the the last time that I was going to go, I like kind of stutter stepped when I got there and gravity and momentum, y'all yanked me off the fucking platform and took me across the zip line. And I just will forever remember that moment of life. I was doing too much procrastination. I needed to surrender to the procrastination and zip my ass across the line. You're going to have fun. It's going to be great. It's going to be safe. Even if it's a little rocky even if you don't know what lies in the bounds this is where we are trying to embrace the unknown and stop trying to control it or dictate it um surrender unhealthy relationships let go of relationships that don't serve you including unavailable or toxic people you deserve to be treasured by others and to be surrounded by positive people so we already know these eclipses venus just moved into aries today i believe um Venus is in Aries, North Node is in Aries, Mercury, Mars, Venus. I already said Venus. Moon, the moon will be in Aries. All of those things are already in Aries now, but they will all be in Aries on Monday. And you see his heart is on fire. Burn it to the ground. So that like the phoenix, you can rise from the ashes, but you're not going to be able to rise from shit if you keep holding on to it. You can't. Um, keep making excuses for people. We talked about that a little bit last week, you know, making excuses on why you tolerate certain things when we realize that now the only reason why we were in the relationship, at the job, tolerating the, the apartment, driving the car is because of an outdated vibration and modality that was never even ours. It's something that we received while we were in the womb and that was not part of our nutritional value. So we are letting go of it. Surrender to inner peace is another energy that comes up. Cultivate inner peace on a daily basis. In quiet, meditative moments, focus on the stillness within and enjoy this inner refuge. Others will feel your good vibes too and your life will flow more easily. If it costs you your peace, then it costs you too much. And a lot of us are starting to truly understand what it means to be at peace internally without the validation or approval or excess of the world. And that can make some people in your life a little uncomfortable. That can make even some practices that you've been keeping up a little uncomfortable because now you realize that you don't need them in order to be peaceful. And then the final energy is to surrender your desire to control people. Begin over... <laughs> Being over controlling can sabotage relationships. To more effectively achieve your goals, take off, regroup, and give the situation some breathing room. So... Not going to be able to force anybody to do anything that they don't want to do. It's really going to be important for you to stay in the driver's seat and the focus point of what it is you're trying to achieve. If you know you're trying to achieve a long-term uh, monogamous, loyal relationship, but you're with a liar, cheater, manipulator, then you're going to have to change. You'll have to leave. They're not going to change. You'll have to change. You'll have to leave because they're not going to change. If you know that you one day want to you know, look at your bank account and it be... Uh, six figures deep where you one day be a millionaire you will have to start being logical and I know that the law of attraction community and the spiritual community and the manifestation community which I'm all a part of all of those right will not agree with me on this but you have to be logical there's no way that you're going to be able to do a three by 33 ritual for a million dollars and you work a job that pays 11 dollars an hour 
and you don't play the lot you don't play the lottery now if you play the lottery your guess is as good as mine you know your 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 odds of winning are up there but if you're just i wish on a star that's not gonna that's not gonna be enough you got to do something more you have to get in position like i said last week you have to get in position to not only deliver but to receive let's see what our moon energies are you are very close to achieving your goal the full moon that occurred a couple of weeks ago likely showed you how close you are. You're starting to stop be so hard on yourself and realize, oh shit, I did exactly what it was I was supposed to do. I'm where I'm supposed to be. Even if it's a little uncomfortable or I'm in the unknown, that path to the unknown. I actually, you go and you look at your life inventory checklist and you're like, oh my God, I have half of it done. I've been tripping for nothing. I'm almost there. It's kind of like when you go to file your taxes and you think that you have forgotten a document or lost a document and they're like, oh no, we, we already got that. You're fine. I'm further than I thought I would be. Have faith in your dreams. And new moons are the typical darkest part of the moon phase. So we never see the moon. See, and this is why that decoding shit on Patreon goes so deep. Because if the new moon is the darkest side and we don't ever really see the, we the darkest point of the moon and we don't see the moon, how are we having a new moon total eclipse? I don't know. I, I, just, I just live here. I just live here on this planet. Look at the bigger picture is another energy that comes up. The, the small details in the bigger picture always matter. You know, when you're doing your checklist, a checklist again for life or if you're going on a road trip or you're going on vacation, you have to make sure that you have your underwear, your toiletries, your lotion, your body cream, all of that. Because, you know, once you get away from home, you will not have those things. You will be out of your comfort zone. And that is what the Aries solar new moon total eclipse is giving us. You're going to be out of your comfort zone. You're going to be displaced, so to say. For just a while, maybe just a week or so, but you're going to be displaced as you are being put into this new energy, as you are being placed into this upgrade, this ascension, you will not have your comfort zones and your surroundings. Uh, remember, Aries is the infant of the zodiac, so you're not going to have the things that you've been clinging to since you were a child that are going to take you through your next journey. Some of the things you will have to let go of. Some tradition will stick, but a lot of things, people, beliefs, all of that will have to be left by the wayside in order for you to inherit your upcome. Your come up. <laughs> uh, take time to breathe it out is another energy, the final energy for the moon. Take time to breathe it out. Avoid the extremes is what I can say. You know, Aries is the first sign of the Zodiac. They're the first fire sign of the Zodiac. They are self-starters. They are warriors. They are the ones who you come to for strategy and plotting and execution. They're impulsive. You know, uh, Aries placements, uh, kind of, especially Venus Aries, get that Romeo and Juliet vibe of I was going to ride and die. We're going to just ride till we do it. Uh, Aries is very much so love at first sight. I fell in love as soon as I saw her, as soon as I saw him. But then within a couple of weeks, that's when the truth settles in. And it, as quick as that fire started is when this fire ends. So the same thing is true with pacing yourself through the eclipse season. I know that it seems like you're losing it. I know you feel like you're losing pacing and footing. And you may not know if you're coming or going. And, and, and that is for a very specific group. Because some of us are on the other side of the eclipse where we did all of the hard work. We did all the necessary work. We are now kind of seeing that, oh shit, I survived what, what came to kill me. I'm still, I might be laying on the battlefield, but the battle is over. At this point, I'm just trying to find my way home. I'm trying to retrieve my, my belongings. Um, because I've had a couple of clients who are like, this eclipse has been great for me. Nothing has been going on. And my best friend got married today. Um, her and her partner have been together for a while. He is an Aries, like, rising or moon. I can't remember what his Aries placement is, but it's just on point. Um, and where normally I would say don't get married during a retrograde, all of this is such a deep healing in the retrograde with the Aries being the star player, with the infant, the baby, the beginning, the seed being the star player that it's really a beautiful time. You know, it's the it's the... Return of the things that were once lost is the portal that we're in. So the solar eclipse is going to be at 1.21 p.m. CST time. So adjust for your time zone. 
on 4-8. That will be on Monday. As I mentioned before, the North Node, Mercury, Chiron, Moon, Venus, and Sun will all be in Aries. Now, the reason why the South Node um, lunar eclipse in Libra was less volatile or it didn't shake you up so much or maybe it did. You know, it's, but it's because it was in the South. It's what you've already been doing. It's what you need to let go of. And again, if you've been doing your work of letting go of your old self, that really wasn't that monumental for you. You were like, I already know what needed to go. I already knew I wasn't fucking with them. I already knew that I couldn't do that anymore, right? This solar eclipse is going to be in the North Node of who you have to become. And don't don't be a person that doesn't have no Aries placements, or you don't even have no Aries friends. You have never done this before. So you don't know what to look towards um, or how to, to do this. And this is why it can be a little more challenging uh, for you. But the North Node is our compass saying, go this way. I've been telling you guys for weeks, go and find um, Aries, Libra, and your chart. Aries rules the first house as well. Libra rules the seventh house as well. Um, com also with the planets that you already have or the placements that you already have. So go and see where specifically these effects are coming to you, how they are occurring for you. Even if you have an empty house, you still have the energy of the sign. That's why, again, you will want to go look at your first house or your seventh house if you don't have Libra or um, Aries in your chart. Um, when I was making the notes, I heard, it's all about me, 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 me. <laughs> Maya, because it's a very selfish time. Loso, my, my favorite rapper, he, his, he got a song that came out like in December, Selfish. And on the beginning of it, he's like, you know, 2024 going to be a real selfish year for me. You know, and it's facts. This is that note. This is this nodal Aries eclipse that's coming. Again, Aries is the infant. So infants don't care about anybody else. Infants will cry and do all. I can't. Th this piece of hair is like going to make me mad. I need like a bobby pin or something because it's just, it's, I don't like how it's sticking there. And I try to spray it down. Anyways, infants will cry and make a, you know, a, a, a whole song and dance at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning because they're hungry. A toddler will kick, scream, and cry until they get what they want. They do not care who that affects because it's all about me. That's Aries. And there ain't no disrespect to Aries. That's just, that's Aries. Um, Aries is going to go for the wind. They're going to go for the gusto. They're going to do whatever their heart desires and maybe think about the consequences later, apologize later, ask for forgiveness later. But in the moment, I have to attain it. So with us having all of those planets, what is it? One, two, three, four, five, six planets in Aries. It's about to be a very selfish time for us. This eclipse will be unfolding until next March. I think it's March 25th where we have another Aries solar eclipse. It'll be the final one. But it's the only Aries eclipse that we have all year. Then we'll have another one next March. This will be panning out for a year, just as all of the Pisces transitions and conjunctions and sextile will be panning out until the Pisces eclipse at the end of the year. It's all coming to expand us um, in the in the hopes that we will be willing to leave the things that we have allowed to shrink us behind. Venus ruled the first eclipse because Libra is ruled by Venus. It was conjunct Saturn, which is in Pisces. Mars is the ruler of this eclipse, which is the ruler of Aries, which co-ruler or ancient ruler of Scorpio. So Scorpio placement in sun, moon, rising, north node. This is your fucking time too. This is your time. Pay attention. Get it together. Take your notes. What do I need to do? Um, Mars, ruler of Aries. Mars is going to be conjunct Saturn and, and Pisces as well. So both of these eclipses within 14 days of each other are coming and sitting in the... Um, beautiful coming together position that's all the conjunction is of saturn and pisces now and like i said a couple of weeks ago saturn has been in pisces for a year so saturn might be have beaten your ass this whole time but if you just been not necessarily showing that you are going to surrender to that ass beating but you more so surrender to the lessons that saturn's been trying to show you this new moon although it is an eclipse and it's a total solar eclipse it also can stand to bring you a lot of blessings and awarenesses um spiritual 
asc ascensions and deeper understandings of your purpose, your mission, min your mission, the world as a whole and the collective. The first eclipse was about the divine feminine as it was ruled by Libra, the Venusian, the return of the divine feminine. So what does that mean if this one is ruled by Mars? This is the return of the divine masculine. <clears throat> As I was writing this, I got some images of tomboys. I'm a tomboy myself. I'm a recovering tomboy. I'm just now getting into the whole, like, how powerful it is to embrace that femininity. Um, I have a podcast episode from a couple of years ago where I talk about how the T in tomboy stands for trauma. The only reason why a lot of girls are tomboys are because of the trauma that they have, have gone through and survived and had to find some sort of protective barrier in order to be who they are today. But um, what I heard is tomboys, it's time for us to put our kicks away or at least put them away for, you know, a couple of days out the week and embrace the power that it is to be the divine feminine, to be a direct reflection of mother goddess, the, the one who gives life, can take life, can pro give you the rebirth, can provide you the resource, can give you the rain that you need when you're thirsty, you know, can give you the sun that you need when you're, when you're cold. Um, but then the same is true with this being Mars ruled for the men. Men, it's time to put your toys away and take up your cloak and your sword, boo. You know, I know there is a battle of the sexes right now. There's been a battle of the sexes at the beginning of time. And I always tell people that too. It was never a battle of the races. It was always a battle of the sexes. Um, I talked about that on the last one. Um, where women were in the position of power, women were the first gods, and we kind of took that around with it. So, of course, as with anything, it's going to have to teeter-totter. So it went into the patriarchal ruler, and we let them rule for a little bit, and they fucked shit up. So now we see that it's going to take both halves of that system for it to work, the duality of the universe and the cosmos in order for all of that to work. So, many time under this eclipse, you may be urged or people who are watching this, your partner, your masculine partner may be urged or inspired to either take on responsibility or stay committed or develop a, a system or something, feeling more protective or um, wanting to maintain the ability to provide for themselves or for their family, regardless of where they've been all year, regardless of what's been happening. This eclipse can really serve as a portal um, for them. Okay, and men also may find themselves being a lot more introspective about what their true power is, what it really is to be a man. Now, I'm not a man, so I can't sit here and, you know, a man is supposed to walk like this, and a man is supposed to talk like this, and a man is supposed to do this, you know. But reevaluating what a man means to you, what it means to be a man to you, and how you can show up for that in your family, in your own life, is really going to be highlighted. Um, like I mentioned before, we've been talking about for weeks how a lot of what we're experiencing now or what we've adopted to is because of what we experienced as a kid. Aries being the infant of the zodiac. We're coming back through the womb. The sun is literally going to die on Monday with that total solar eclipse if just for a few minutes. And then it's going to come back into a whole cycle of rebirth. That is so significant. For us, that is exactly what we are all undergoing at this point in time. This is the biggest turning point of the year. This may be the biggest turning point of a lot of people's lives because now you just have an, a deeper understanding of what your purpose is, what you're here for, what you're supposed to be doing, who you're supposed to be doing it with. Um, and under this eclipse, we're going to be modifying our theories. Um, I also said, I've already said before, Aries has no problem with choosing themselves, but... The impulses that Aries has, or that even some of us may feel with all this Aries transition, have to be slowed down and predicated. Usually eclipses kind of set things on fire and they start going really, really fast. Um, even if it's a lunar eclipse, it's shit just overnight it was different. This one is going to be gradual. It's going to be a gradual change. Towards summer, it'll look different. Towards the fall, it'll feel different. Towards the, the summer, the winter, it'll look different. Towards the next rebirth into the spring when we come back to this eclipse you will look and feel different remember the first house is ruled by aries and the uh, first house is your appearances your new beginnings your approach to life your identity the way that the world receives you your first house is typically your rising sign um so that also is how the world receives you how the world thinks that you are so all of that y'all is going to change in the next year all of it is going to change on top of wherever your Aries placement is, it will look different. Um, Aries rules the head and the neck and the face. So 
cosmetic appearances, going through different, you know, um, ideologies or the way that you identify is going to change how you want to appear in the world and not who you used to be is going to be coming up. Um, we're going to all be realizing that we're right where we need to be. Having the confidence to look at something that we've been previously ashamed of, whatever that may be. Um, on my Instagram a couple of days ago, I started talking about perimenopause. I'm 38 years old. I have a seven-year-old. I feel like I've been going through perimenopause since I was 36. I just look young, thank God, and my ancestors. But I am every bit of the 38-year-old, about to be 39 in July of this year. So when I mentioned it to some people before a couple of years ago, they were like, oh, you're too young. There's no way that you're going through that. And now I know that I'm full blown in, in uh, perimenopause. And I, it just got me to thinking about a month ago, if I'm going through this, I know I'm not the only one going through this. You know, millennial 80s babies, we go through the shit together. It's like they had us all on a system or programming or something. So let me, boop, 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 let me put out my beepers and see which one of my, my people are feeling this way. It's been amazing and alarming how many women are sharing their story about either being um, what is the word, discouraged about their perimenopausal process, denied, they're in denial about it, or someone else told them that they are in denial about going through it. Um, a, one girl, her perimenopause symptoms were actually her being pregnant in her late 30s, 38, 39 years old. Um, and so it's just, it's just shown me that where at one time a large group of generational women were afraid to talk about this part of life, the change, perimenopause and menopause. I now, especially black and brown women, I now can't afford to be ashamed and we don't have to be ashamed. We're all women. We're going through this. Some of us have gone through it even before, you know, this age. Some people had to go through it in their 20s. I know my mother, she had a hysterectomy when she was 25. So my mom went through the change when she was 25. I remember she told me I was going through the change while my friends were getting pregnant. I, even as a kid, that blew my mind. I'm like, damn. But now that I'm going through the shit, I'm like, whoa, you was going through this by yourself and you didn't have nobody to talk to because you was going through it 20 years before your friends was going through it. It's heavy. It's heavy. So um, for me, I've been. that's one thing that I w I'm not going to say I was necessarily ashamed about it, but I'm definitely not going to be hush hush or quiet about it, especially in the patriarchal collapse of the world. Women need to know that, you know, we got our we got our back out here. Um, Venus is in Aries, 19 degrees. Now we can think back to July of 2022 when Chiron was in uh, the exact same degree position. And Chiron, again, is the wounded healer. It's the inner child in us that kind of still craves that love, that attention, that admiration, the support, whatever that we did not get as a child. We still crave it today. We look for it today. And sometimes you may find that you just continuously attract people who take advantage of you. So like Chiron and Libra, <clears throat> you always attract people who just want to take advantage of your time and your space and, and, you know, your opinion. They want to try to convince you into what it is they want you to believe as opposed to your own beliefs. Chiron and cancer, your mother likely sacrificed you this lifetime one way or another, whether it was choosing relationships over you, choosing drugs over you, alcohol, whatever. And throughout life, you've been trying to find, you know, resolve there or that nurturing and love that you always deserve from a mother figure and because of that you may attract the wrong type of people in your life because you're always just looking for love i'm just looking for love so sometimes you're looking for love in the wrong places that can also kind of distract you or have you say that you don't want to have kids at all because of what you experienced as a kid so chiron is in aries right now um for a long long time they said that chiron was ruled by saturn and uranus in the last decade or two, astrologers believe that Chiron is ruled by Mercury. So with that being said, um, karmic, whether it's going to be that Saturn, ancient karma, um, the future karma, because you made a decision right now in this moment that Uranus, like you, you made the decision to go left and because you went left, this is what happened, good or bad. Um, and then Mercury, Mercury rules your Achilles. So be careful. Just be careful. There's a lot of sh weird shit. I, I did not want to get on here and fear monger. I'm not going to talk about it at all. I'm really not going to talk about the download that I had. I'm not even going to tell Patreon that because firm believer that if you entertain it, then you just give it fuel. It can just kind of be like um, a download or a vision or an inkling into something. But sometimes you may be receiving it the wrong way or you might be 
interpreting it the wrong way. So I'm not speaking on it, but what I will say is all eclipses can be volatile. Mercury retrograde is always a little volatile. Now we're talking about the eclipses in Aries and Mercury is in Aries. And then everything else is in Aries. Venus is in Aries. Told you, ride until we die. Oh, yeah. And then everything that's happening right now, too, can be very triggering to people. So like I've shared with a couple of my clients this week, remember that the separation impacts people differently. So you might separate from something or someone and go home, take a shower, dance, smoke a blunt, get into your energy or whatever, and, and be okay with it in a couple of days. Other people, even if they're the ones who initiated the separation or the ending, don't tolerate it well. And they may drown in that for a while. And because they're drowning, they're looking at anyone that they can kick back at. So you might be the one who receives that. That's why it's important for you to just protect your boundaries at this time. Um, Chiron, Aries, if you've ever seen the Chiron glyph on a zodiac wheel or even, you know, in a listing of, it, of your chart, Chiron is a key. The, the glyph of Chiron is actually a key. The key of Chiron shows you the doors of the past that blocked you or enabled you or hindered you. And under this Chiron Aries eclipse energy, you are receiving the keys of empowerment for the future. But are you going to be willing to take them? Or do you want to keep dancing in your sadness? You want to keep, you know, griping and complaining about everything. Um, so new levels of healing. But remember, as things are changing and upgrading, it gets a little... Ugh, just right before the upgrade or the breakthrough is when all of the chaos happens. So you can't give up before the miracle. Um, Chiron is literally providing us our own internal medicine. Um, inner child retrieval dating back to the Pisces full moon and then the Libra eclipse. So, you know, we had the Pisces full moon like a week before the Libra eclipse and then we had the Libra uh, eclipse. You likely met who you're supposed to be or who you can be or who you were going to be before the pain. And now you're being offered the opportunity to kind of like wash the slate clean. It's important not to keep telling your sad stories. It's important not to try to fight for your conditions. When, when you are just feeling good and moving at a high vibration and attracting the things that you ultimately want and desire, it's important for you to not try to stop and explain to somebody who doesn't understand how you're doing that or why you're doing that just because you feel good. Because I feel good, I started getting things that I wanted. Because I feel good, things started working in my favor. You trying to explain that to someone who feels like they have to run 15 circles a day and they got to be up at 8 a.m. and go to sleep at 12 a.m. You're never going to do it and you're just going to talk yourself out of what you already know to be true. Same thing where a Christian is not going to be able to convince a Muslim when a Muslim is not going to be able to convince a Jew or and so on and so forth. We going to do what we do and believe what we believe and move how we move and pray how we pray and be empowered through those things. But the minute you try to slow yourself down or stop yourself to try to bring down your momentum to someone else's understanding is when you're going to um, hit a wall. So who you are meeting or who you already previously met is who you were before the pain, who you were supposed to be before the pain. And it's really exhilarating. It's really a dope ass thing to know that like, your youngest, least traumatized self always knew who and what you were supposed to be, to be happy, to be successful, what you were supposed to do, who you were supposed to have around you. And now we're getting the peepers into that shit. First row seats and the opportunity to let it all go. Uh, we'll be gravitating towards the people and places that's supposed to be in our life. And you'll also find that the people and places who are supposed to be in your life will be gravitating towards you as well. Um, if you get random inklings or downloads to go somewhere you've never gone before, eat something you've never eaten before, drink something you've never drinking before. And I don't mean that someone outside of you came and said this. I mean, you were in meditation or you had a dream and you were guided to go to this place. Don't ask too many questions, you know, just spirit. Am I going to be protected here? Am I going to be safe here? Okay, cool. I'm going to go and see what it is you want me to know. I went to a spot around around the corner from my house. We moved here a couple of months ago, so I'm still getting the feel of the neighborhood. But I went to this spot that I randomly found in the way that it's just been a gym for me. I've been able to get all the fresh tea that I need in the world. Um, the, their food is good. I've been trying to eat more clean, so they always have spinach ready. And it has like the best fucking flavor to it. I'm like seven minutes away from my house and it's affordable. What? Because I went out on a on an impulse. I, I went out and said, oh, I don't know what Spirit wants me to do. Why you want me to go here on this side of the street? But I will. And that's what I found. And that was about a week ago. So um, 
a lot of impulses are your energetic attachment to the universe sending you in the right direction of where it is that you need to be for what it is that you are working on. But you still sometimes want to wait and, and investigate the impulse before you wholeheartedly commit to it. Slow down, be careful as with all eclipses, but especially with Chiron at the party, like I mentioned earlier, we're going to be feeling more confident in our individuality, flaws and all. This is literally the catalyst of the year. Things are changing here and now. Here and now, I promise to love faithfully. So I'm excited. I'm still offering the solar new moon eclipse readings um, on my site. You can also, these cards flew out. We're going to see if they come out again on my site. You can also download the solar eclipse through the houses. Um, it's, it's, so it's a PDF that breaks down every house transit. Then I also have a video on there where I'm teaching you how to look at your houses on your chart. So you can apply that for any eclipse, any new moon, any full moon. Learning astrology, empowering yourself, learning human design, and empowering yourself are the most thing and powerful things that you can do. Mm. I said the middle way. Avoid the extremes. I said that. I said that. Take time and breathe it out. It was, it was along with that. And what was another time? It was something else. But avoid the extremes. Walk the middle way. Walk this way. Because... Anything that you say to someone right now is going to be amplified. Are you ready for that smoke? Is it worth it? Is it worth it? A lot of shit just really ain't worth it. That's what I'm learning as I get older. Like I said, this new moon eclipse it has money opportunities. It has abundance opportunities because even though it's an eclipse, it's still a new moon. So it's still giving the opportunity of expansion. And a lot of y'all are going to expand after you let go of some people, spiritual partnership. After you let go of some people, after you stop procrastinating and let go of the the, the health, unhealthy relationships in your life or the unhealthy beliefs in your life, you're really going to be able to touch the abundance that you need. After you really start uh, nurturing your spiritual partnership, taking your meditation more seriously, your connection with your ancestors, your connection with the Most High, your own God consciousness, Taking it more spirit seriously, you're going to see a lot more things work out in your favor. The lovers. Um, like I said, some people might be getting a lot more close under this eclipse. Getting married, getting engaged. Um, and if you've not been with your person for a while, if you don't know if y'all really should be, you know, jumping the broom and doing any of that, don't go with the impulse. Just like ride the wave of the good feeling, you know. Uh, we got engaged this weekend, but we don't have to get married next week you know take your time there also can be eclipses bringing out some truths some of y'all may find out that your partner is not who they've been saying they are or they have something else going on third party energy retreating we got the six and the nine right after each other retreating to your internal peace on the actual eclipse itself if you can be indoors if you can uh, be still if you can sit in reflection if not do it that night when you get home and reflect on what has been coming through to you what has been revealed to you um, what is the next move that you need spiritual partnership um, you're not going to be able to ask people outside of you what's the best thing that you should do for you that's why it's best for you to go here also a lot of the wins that you're about to have money opportunities you ain't going to be able to tell everybody so you're going to need to have your spiritual partnership on deck. And you're going to need to be okay with just applauding and partying by yourself on the uh, things that you've accomplished. Don't spend too much time in contemplation. Fortune favors action. And that's facts. So here's that procrastination. And again, with this Aries energy, it's going to be real easy to say, no, I want to do it. So like I said, I just flipped these bangs up on accident. And they worked out right. I just threw these jewels on my face today and it worked out right. I impulsively went to that place last week and it worked out right. A lot of the impulses, like I said, are just internal guidance systems telling you that that's where you need to go. And especially if you've been thinking about it. I don't know if I've shared over here about the whole YouTube journey, but I wanted to do a YouTube page for years, for years. And every time I would just get nervous and I just really didn't want to, you know, have my face out here. I didn't want to be out on camera like that smile you're on candid camera 
I, I just really didn't want to do it. Um, but spirit kept telling me, I have to do it. And I was like, really? Oh, I didn't know. And then when I finally did it, like I said, it's just been, it's been great. Uh, it's something I really look forward to doing every week. And I'm grateful. So whatever continues to transpire and come from this page, I'm just grateful that I took the opportunity that I did not allow my fear. I didn't wait too much time. Well, I waited some years procrastinating. But that's the thing about a calling. It will continue to call and call you. Justice, things are uh, evening out the way that they need to. That's Miss Lisa, uh, Lisa Lopez. Lisa Left Eye Lopez. <laughs> I was talking too fast. Slow down. Slow down. Um, Jupiter is going to be moving into Gemini soon. Like, I feel like either the end of this month or the beginning of May, Jupiter is going to be moving into Gemini. So if you've been feeling like luck has been a little down on your side, everything is balancing itself out, up, down. This eclipse is also balancing everything out. I said last week, just how all the celebrities are getting aired out with their dirt, people in your life, your enemy is going to be getting aired out with their dirt too. Just don't take them back. The final energy is uh, stay focused and remember why you started. It's real easy to lose sight. It's real easy to get weighed down with, you know, life or even just outside distractions. Stay focused. Do not take your eye off of the prize. Do not take your eye off of what is supposed to be transpiring for you. Keep focusing on why you started. You, you didn't you didn't start to prove anybody wrong. You started so that you could be happy, healthy, free, and vibrationally in alignment with the things that are best for you. And when you feel good, you attract good things. When you are grateful for almost everything that's uh, um, transpiring in your life, then that gives you more things to be grateful for. So y'all have a great eclipse. I look forward to working with y'all in your own individual readings. Remember, you can subscribe to my Patreon. It's the Trap House with two S's everywhere on Instagram, here, Spotify, all of that. So I love y'all. Have a great week. Holla back.